The new ARC90 chassis by Deepcool is a case and CPU cooling solution in one, featuring an integrated Captain Series liquid cooling system with a 280mm radiator and two RGB fans that's tied to a distinct external flow indicator. Combine this with high-end features like tempered glass side panels, EATX support, and tasteful RGB lighting, and the new ARC90 could house your next epic PC build. Click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent! You should be able to buy an absolutely amazing gaming PC for about $1,100 right now. A rig that could handle VR, 4K high refresh rate gameplay, live streaming and video editing without breaking a sweat. So why can't we? The short answer is that a few components are ridiculously overpriced. System memory, graphics cards, and to a lesser extent, SSDs. We should also have seen a new generation of graphics cards by now, from Nvidia at least, but lack of competition and the fact that current gen cards launched in 2016 are still selling for more than they did two years ago provides Team Green with little motivation to actually do so. But there is hope for the future, as we are now seeing legal action against DRAM manufacturers for possible price fixing, and GPU prices are trending downward. So today, rather than discuss the why of all this, I'm going to go over the PC that you should be able to put together right now if various factors hadn't caused all these horrific pricing bubbles. And no, the purpose of this video isn't just to frustrate you, it's to remind you that there has been a nefarious long-term push going on in the tech industry for higher prices, and we shouldn't just accept it. We shouldn't accept GPU prices that are only 30 to 50 bucks over MSRP because they were 100 or 200 bucks overpriced a couple months ago. And we shouldn't think to ourselves, wow, a 16 gig RAM kit for $150, that's way better than 200, when they were easily able to still sell that kit for $100 and still make a profit two years ago. Actually, hold on, I'm double checking my July 2016 monthly build and here's a 16 gig Rip Jaws kit for $70. So this has affected me too. I look at the prices of PC components all the time and this creeping normalcy of high prices has also affected me. The norm right now shouldn't be this. It should be the PC I'm about to describe to you. Now, the system I'm going to be using as a basis for comparison is my July 2016 build, a $1,200 build for my monthly builds series. And $1,200 is kind of the baseline price I've been going for for a higher-end gaming system. Not like super high-end, crazy expensive, but a reasonable price that someone might invest in a computer that they're going to use for gaming, as well as other tasks too. Everything on this parts list is still available. And if you buy it right now, this is the price. $1,550, two years later. I'm going with ballpark dollar amounts for my theoretical $1,100 build, and I'm not choosing specific parts for the most part, but I wanted to start out with three components that not much blame can be cast upon. The case, the power supply, the motherboard, really haven't seen too much price fluctuation over the past couple years. So a reasonable layout of parts for a case, power supply, and motherboard can be seen in my uh, parts list for my May 2018 $900 build. Uh, about 50 bucks for a power supply can get you a decent 550 watt job that will handle just about any graphics card you can throw at it. A $70 case will get you a nice case. Of course, you can get cases cheaper, but 70 bucks is a good price range for something that has a nice set of features and also looks pretty. Finally, for a motherboard, and I'm basing this on current prices of X470 motherboards that just launched, about 140 bucks. You can get a decent entry-level overclocking motherboard. Not gonna have all the bells and whistles, but we'll get the job done just fine. So now let's talk about the parts that have actually changed and made a pretty big difference over the past couple years. In 2016, we all had to be happy with a four core, four thread CPU from Intel, like the 6600K for about $230. They had a four core, eight thread option for about a hundred bucks more than that, but who wants to pay all that money when you're trying to get by with a reasonably priced PC? success story from the past couple years is the AMD Ryzen launch, which started with the Ryzen 7 CPUs in March 2017, followed up with Ryzen 5 launch in April 2017, and one year later, April 2018, we have Ryzen 2 CPUs launched just last month, and for your 230 bucks, you now get six cores and 12 threads. 12 threads versus four threads is a really nice jump in raw compute performance for your CPU, and it's a perfect new thing to happen since the rise of game streaming and the necessary video transcoding and editing that might go along with it. People are using their computers for more than just gaming these days. You can even get a six core CPU from Intel now on their mainstream platform in the form of an 8400 or an 8600K, but you still need to pay a $100 premium on top of that if you want your hyper-threading. 
The next component is storage. Unfortunately, storage pricing has been recovering much more quickly than RAM or GPU pricing. And I'm happy to say that you can once again get a 500 gig class SATA SSD for just over $100, even just under, under $100 if you go for this team drive right here. Uh, and you can even get a 250 gig class drive for about 60 to 70 ish dollars. Flipping back to 2016, my SanDisk SSD Plus 480 gig was $110. So uh, this is pretty much back where it was two years ago. So there hasn't been a whole lot of progress, but it is still good. Next up is system memory. So let's take a cold, hard look at what memory has been up to recently. Keep in mind that memory is inelastic. It is absolutely a requirement for a modern gaming PC. You could get by without a GPU temporarily if you use an APU, for example. You can even limp your system along with a mechanical hard drive rather than an SSD, although you might vomit everywhere every time you boot up. But for now, you, you gotta have memory. PC Part Picker keeps trends lists for memory as well as other components. So if we go down here to take a look at some DDR4 2400, this is the average price for a four by four gig kit. And the average price listed here tends to be a little bit more than you can actually buy it for because it's looking at the whole range of memory options. But even though this isn't going back far enough, it's only going back to about November, 2016, we can see the gradual steady rise of this kit getting well over 200 bucks before settling back down just a little bit to around the $200 range. Fortunately though, we can reference back to my monthly builds video from a couple years ago to see that this G-Skill Ripjaws 5 series kit was available for only $70. How much does it cost now? $180. A $110 price jump for this same kit of memory. So in my theoretical build, I have theoretical really cheap memory too. I'm gonna take this base price of $70 and figure you probably want some RGB RAM as well. So let's uh, knock it up to $80. We'll do a generous $80 premium for your 16 gig RGB memory kits. I really hope that the lawsuits or whatever other factors are going on right now take effect soon and prices drop further than what they have right now. Because what we're seeing right now is a bit of a drop, but nowhere near down to where they should be. And now onto the GPU. And here's where we're talking about not just what's available and overpriced right now, but what should have been. And we should have had an NVIDIA next gen GPU launch in mid to late 2017 based on their historical launch cadence. Now, when the 1000 series of GPUs launched from NVIDIA back in 2016, the shiny new GTX 1070 was just about on par performance wise with the 980 Ti from the previous generation. And it cost about $400. So if Nvidia kept up with their normal launch schedule, it's reasonable to expect that we should, or we could buy a next gen card right now. A GTX 1080 Ti performance ballpark equivalent GPU for about $400. Of course, it would be called the GTX 1170 or GTX 2070, but that was my expectation for what we should have saw launched this year. And I'm pretty sad that it actually didn't come to pass. Hopefully later this year, but that's about a year too late in my opinion. So if you add all this up, you have what should be a really, really nice build for about $1,100. Epic gaming performance, tons of cores and threads for CPU heavy workloads, and even more possible performance via CPU and RAM upgrades. Instead, you have this, my build from July 2016, all parts still available by the way, coming in for the low, low price of $1,550 instead of $1,200 that it cost two years ago. And that's kind of sad. I also consider how this pricing situation may have affected other PC parts. 4K HDR high refresh rate gaming monitors have been teased for two years now, but they keep delaying the launch. My suspicion is because there's nobody to buy them because no one has high-end gaming PCs because they're so expensive. I also have to imagine that sales of stuff like VR headsets and even other components like the motherboards and the cases may have suffered as well. But my final advice to you guys is this, vote with your wallet and be patient. Do everything you can to hold off and not buy any of these components while they're overpriced. And maybe, just maybe, in the summer of 2018, we'll be able to build this PC. Until then, Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more just like it. And thank you guys so much for watching.